Hello and welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to look at something that's been requested a couple of times on my uh, moderator form on my channel. Uh, if you want to make any requests then you can do so on the moderator form and then it allows people to vote on it. If it gets enough votes, if it looks like it's something that I'll, uh, most people will be interested in then I'll try and make it. And this is one that somebody's requested, it's how to make an image that looks like the album cover to Drake's Thank Me Later. So this is the kind of effect that we're looking for. Um, it's very similar in some ways to the Show Yourself tutorial I did a couple of years ago, um, but this is a lot quicker and a lot easier. So uh, I hope you find this helpful and interesting. So the first thing you're going to need is an image of yourself um, with a plain background if possible. Um, try and think of it as a passport photo. You know, you want a nice plain background, that'll make it a lot easier. Um, later on and if you try it without plain background you'll see why it becomes difficult um, but all you're going to need is an image of yourself basically looking at the camera um, Drake and myself both have facial hair in the images I'm not sure if that makes much of a difference um, I wasn't going to shave just to find out if it made a difference so there you go um, but once you've got your image the first thing we're going to need to do is make the black um, sort of cut out sketch background so the first thing we're going to do is just make this black and white by going to colors up the top here and desaturate. Now for this I like to use the luminosity setting. It doesn't make much difference but it just gives you a slightly different contrast. So we're going to pick luminosity and then OK. And then very similar to the show yourself tutorial we're going to go to colors again and then pick threshold. And you can see that gives us a kind of uh, sketch outline of the face already. Now this is a little bit too um, black at the moment, there's too much filled in area, so just to give a little less um, blackness, a little more co um, more detail to the image, uh, I'm just going to turn this down slightly. Now you're just going to need to toggle these until you get the effect you're happy with. But basically I just want enough that I can make out the whites of my eyes, that's essentially what I'm looking for. So that might be a little bit too much maybe, I might go up a little bit more. So on my image I've gone for about 92 but yours will vary. And then we just go to OK. And then I'm going to need to make sure I've got my layers open. If you've accidentally closed your layers then you can just press Ctrl and L for layers and it will come back. Uh, that's if you're using Windows, I'm not sure what the Mac shortcut keys are. Uh, and once we've got this image um, there's just a couple of extra things we're going to do. The first thing I want to do is get rid of this um, black part up here. All I'm really going to do with that is erase it. Um, so I just pick my eraser and get rid of it. That's just because I only want the black and white to be from my face. So that's quite straightforward. The next thing I'm going to need to do is duplicate this image. So to duplicate the image we go over to the layers dialog over here and we can just click this image of two screens on top of each other and we just click this and it will create a duplicate of the layer. Now once we've created a duplicate of the layer all we're going to need to do is click on this top one to begin with the one that says background copy and from there we're going to right click it and scroll down here to add alpha channel and then we click this add alpha channel. Then the next thing we're going to do is choose this select by color tool and we just click that and we just click anywhere that is white. So we just click on the white area and you can see the marching ants shows that that outline has been selected or rather the white part of the outline has been selected and I'm just going to hit the delete key to get rid of the white layer from that top layer. Now it doesn't look like anything's changed but if we look over here at the layers dialog now you can see that um, the top layer actually has a transparent background. And if I just get rid of the bottom layer for a moment you can see that checkered background which shows there's actually nothing else there. Um, but I'll just turn that back on for the moment. So what you should have at this point is two layers of exactly the same thing except one has a transparency to it as well. Now we're going to work on the background layer 
so this is the one at the bottom this is the one that has the white background still and I'm going to deselect everything that I've selected so far so I just go to select and deselect or oh, sorry none so or we could press shift control and A as it says there for the shortcut key but we just press none and then that deselects everything and I'm just going to make sure I have this selected where it's blue now what we're going to do is select all of the black area in this image so we go to the select by color tool again and then we just click on any of the black area and that will select all of the black now if you wanted to you could have done that the other way by simply inverting the selection but sometimes inverting the selection can be a bit imprecise and it will miss out some of the pixels when it swaps from one selection to the other so to get it more thoroughly it's a good idea to deselect everything and then reselect the area that you want if that doesn't make any sense then just ignore it just follow exactly what I'm doing and you won't have any problems so now that we've got the black area selected what we're going to do is change the color of that so that it is red so just to show you what I'm doing I'm going to turn off this top layer uh, just make it invisible by clicking the eyeball now uh, that won't make any difference to the image, it just means we won't see that black image on top. And then still with the background layer selected, I'm going to change the colour of this selection. Now the easy way to do that is to go over to your colours over here and pick any red colour that we think matches the Drake um, colour. So the Drake album cover. Uh, we just want a red that matches that kind of colour. So I've picked one that's about here on the red colour picker. Uh, you don't have to have it exactly the same as this but um, basically not too red but obviously not too much grey or pink in there either so I've just gone for something around this area if you really really want to copy me um, you can just use that HTML notation and it will take you to it as well but you really don't need it that precise now what I'm going to do is basically use a shortcut key to replace the black with the red colour that I've picked so the quick way to do this is just to press control and comma and there you can see it replaces the color immediately and then I'm going to deselect the area that I have selected again so we can just go to select and none or press control shift and A which is the shortcut key there that works so you can see we're already halfway there this is pretty straightforward now the next thing I'm going to do is make my top layer visible again just by turning the, uh, the eyeball back on and you can see that kind of undoes all the good work we've just done but all we're going to do now is move that top layer just a couple of pixels to one side so we're going to choose the move tool first if you want to use a shortcut key you can just press M for move otherwise you can just find the move tool here which is the kind of crosshair one and then very simply we're going to select the top layer and it's important that you do select the top layer and then we're just going to as the tool suggests move it so we just move that to the left slightly or to the right slightly you'll have to excuse my mouse it jumps around a bit at the moment so just about that much should be fine for the moment and you can see we've got the basics of the effect there already there's one final thing I like to do just to add um, a little bit more um, finesse to the effect I guess and that's just to add some motion blur to that back um, that background layer so all we're going to do with that is select the background layer again oops sorry excuse me and then we go to filters and blur and then we choose motion blur and we can actually stick with the default settings because that will just give us a, a nice little blur so just in case your default settings have changed um, I'm going with a linear blur the length is just 5 and the angle is just 10 and that will work fine so we just press OK and you can see that just gives a tiny bit of blur to the image as well just to kind of smudge out some of that redness now if you find that that's giving you too much red then you can just move your black top layer to suit you again and that's it a really straightforward easy way to do it 
So I hope this has been enjoyable and helpful, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.